comment a little bit tonight. About 10 years ago, I preached a, a sermon along these lines. I want to do a little bit different tonight, using a, sort of the same thought, and uh, preach about Thanksgiving in a backward, backward way. So uh, tonight I'm going to preach on some things I'm thankful that I don't have. Being thankful for what you don't have. You know, we always say, I'm thankful for this, thankful for that, thankful for this. You know, I'm thankful that we don't have some things. Praise God. And you can about think of any things you just be thankful you ain't got, you have. You have. But look at Psalm 100. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's why I try to get you all to sing. The Bible said, make a joyful noise. You say, it'd be a noise if I sang, preacher. That's what it said to do. Uh, serve the Lord with gladness. Not, oh, no. It's Saturday. Got to go on bus. God, I got to go to Sunday school. Oh, no. If I don't. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. That's why we sing when we first get here. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Put that in every public school and every college in America. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Charles Darwin had it wrong. Amen. Uh, uh, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. There's that word. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Thank God. And his truth endureth to all generations. Thank God for, for that also. I want to talk, uh, preach a little bit tonight on being thankful for what you don't have. Thanksgiving should be a very big part of our life. And I'm thankful for everything I do have. And God has blessed me abundantly. And I praise Him for it. But tonight, I want to talk about uh, four or five things that I'm thankful that I do not have. I want to pass them on to you and you can make this work in your life, and it'll help you have a good week this week. Number one, I'm thankful this uh, this evening that I don't have a mummy for a Savior. The Bible said in 1 Timothy, uh, chapter 1 and verse 12, there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. That means that Jesus is alive right now at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. He is not a mummy. He is not dead. She mentioned down there in those other countries how they worship false gods and idols. Somewhere, if you knew where to find it, you could find the bones or the dust or ashes of Buddha tonight. They are on this planet somewhere. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And if you could find Buddha's ashes tonight, it would be just like a pile of dust on that that table right there. That's all it would be. Every Buddhist in the world will admit that Buddha died, and that's him. You could suck him up with a vacuum cleaner. Isn't that something? Uh, There's the founder of their religion. Put a vacuum cleaner. There goes Buddha. (laughs) Like that. And that's what's left of him. That's all it was. Take a rag, put a little pledge on there, and just wipe Buddha right right off that. He's dead. He's gone. He's never going to return in this world, in this life. Muhammad, same way. You can, take, you can find the bone somewhere of Muhammad, and somewhere the dust of Muhammad is in on this planet somewhere. Not the Lord Jesus Christ. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. Amen. I'm glad for the empty tomb. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of of care. And just the time I need Him, He's always there. I love those songs like that, letting us know that our Savior is alive. He's alive. He's alive, brother. He is alive. You've heard me get wrote down the list. I won't take time to do it tonight, buddy, but you'll not find his bones. You will not find his finger bone. You will not find his toe bone. You will not find his ankle bone. Every bit of the Lord Jesus got up out of that tomb. The angel rolled uh, 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 the stone away. He was already gone, and he said, go in there and look, and they looked in there. There was nothing. There was nothing. Jesus Christ got up 
from the grave. He arose, ascended up to the Father. He's up there right now. And our Savior is not a mummy. He's not dead. He is alive. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, you've heard me say it before. Old Stevie Wonder will find Bin Laden uh, before they'll find the bones of Jesus. Amen. Hillary will speak in tongues and lead the women's Bible study uh, before they'll find the bones of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ain't going to happen. Amen. Lady Doodoo will wear a modest dress and teach the ladies' Sunday school class uh, before they'll find the bones of Jesus. Amen. Old Colin Kempernicker, or whatever his name is, will sing the national anthem for the Republic Congress before they'll find the bones of the Lord Jesus Christ. Up from the grave he arose. He's alive tonight, y'all. We don't serve a dead God. We don't come in here on Sunday morning before his presence was singing just wishing he was alive. He is alive. Amen. He is alive. And I'm glad for that tonight. I'm glad I don't have a mummy for a Savior. Secondly, tonight. Number two, I'm glad I don't have a monkey for a mother. Amen. I'm glad I don't have a monkey for a mother. You say, where do you get that? The Bible said that Eve is the mother of all living. And she was not a monkey. I'm glad I don't have a mummy for a savior. I'm glad I don't have a monkey for a mother. I like that for a uh, Bible illiterated outline from the uh, from the seminary. Uh, you ain't gonna beat that. I'm telling you, I'm glad I don't have a monkey for my mother. Thank God. I'm glad my mother. I wasn't no monkey. You didn't start out. Darwin had it backwards. Darwin had a starting out little as an amoeba, and then growing up, it's a total opposite. We started up up yonder in the Garden of Eden and failed and been going downhill ever since. They uncovered them giant bones and they won't let you see them at the Smithsonian uh, because it's against uh, the theory of evolution and supports the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you what that book said. The Bible said it is He that hath made us and not we ourselves. All TV shows, all uh, secular education assumes that our mother and dad were monkeys. They believe that we, dis we ascended up from the apes and monkeys of this world. I heard a guy say one time, uh, 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 Kent Hovind, I believe it was, he's talking about how that all the dogs in the world uh, came from two dogs and everything. And, and this lady, she's real smart, educated, and he said, uh, uh, she came up to him and she said, I cannot believe you, as an educated man, believe all the dogs in the world come from two dogs. How do you believe that? How can you possibly believe that? He said, ma'am, you believe that all the dogs in the world came from a rock. And she said, I don't believe that. He said, you do. He, she said, I do not. He said, well, uh, uh, where, where'd we come from? And they, they said, dog, where'd that come from? Where'd that come from? Where'd that come from? And eventually, there was a rock and the primordial soup, and they don't know where the rock come from or the soup or who made it. And listen, if evolution bows down and breaks down completely for a thinking man. That's why the Bible said the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Listen, people, if you'll think, if you'll think. By the way, where did thoughts come from? Did thoughts evolve? I mean, before there ever was a thought, and then all of a sudden, somebody had a thought. I mean, uh, it, it wasn't nothing. If, if evolution were true and it did evolve from that to just be rocks and mass and matter, no one would be able to think. Where did the first thought come from? Who had the first thought? A tadpole, an amoeba, how did it say that? That tadpole wiggling around in that water for about 10 million years said, man, I could do better if I had legs. Think, mama, think, mama, think, mama, think. And they had legs. And they come out and become a frog. And the frog said, I could do better if I could climb that tree. And he grew up and climbed that coconut tree. I could do better if I could do that. And he fell out of the tree and broke his tail off. That took millions of years to do that. And he went and got him on a suit of clothes, a PhD, and said, I've become a man at last. That's how they believe he got here in a nutshell. But I'm telling you, the Bible said, it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Serve an atheist a nice big turkey and dressing dinner and tell him nobody cooked it. Tell him it just popped out of nowhere by itself. Give an atheist a watch for Christmas and tell him that nobody made it. It don't have a maker. It just come out of nowhere by itself. I'm going to tell you tonight, nothing, nothing comes out of nowhere by itself. Everything got made. God made everything. He's creator. We're creation. I'm glad tonight my mother was not a monkey. Amen. 
Adam and Eve were made full-grown people. The first day they were made, they were made a person. They did not evolve. Which, evolve. which evolved first, your digestive system or your appetite? So if you, if you, I sit around and I think about stuff like that all the time going down the road. And I think, well, did we evolve hunger? And so we evolve hunger. Oh, we must want food. If we want food. How are we going to get it? What are we going to do with it? We have to do, evolve a digestive system. Did your digestive system evolve before you could get hungry? What for? Did your hunger desire evolve with no digestive? No, it all got here at the same second. That's the only way it could be. I was thinking about something today. I never thought about this. And I think about stuff like this evolution all the time. And I asked Kelly, I told her the other day, I've always thought it was amazing how that birds, you see birds this time of year, and they're going, going, getting together, going south. It's amazing to see them, hundreds and hundreds of birds, and they're flying. They're going, and some of them things, they go down there and fly a thousand miles south and turn right around in the spring and come right back to the same community with no kinds of instruments, with no radar. People can't do that. Us big genius scientists can't do that, not without radar, not without an instrument on, a, on an airplane. There's no way they can do it. Our brother Joe back there, he's a pilot. Some of you other men are flying. You couldn't fly to South America right, and come right back to the same place. I don't reckon you could uh, and without no kind of instruments at all telling you north, south, east, and west. How do them birds know how to do that? How, where did they get that? They say, well, they, they evolved that. You, remember, you, remember, you mean they couldn't do it? And then they all started freezing to death, so they evolved a way to figure out to go south and get rid of, and figured out how to come back before they all got a stink. You know what they do? You can see 500 of them up there, and Im imagine the ends of my fingers are birds, okay? All the ends of my fingers are birds, and multiply that by about 100, all right? They're flying. They're flying like, you ever seen them fly like this and do like that? Have you ever seen them do that in the sky? Are y'all laughing at me, or can you understand what I'm saying? I'm not gone crazy. All right, imagine these are birds. They're my birds right there. They fly like this. They go. Now, how do they do that? How do they do that? You say, well, they're following the leader. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. They honest to goodness. You see them all do like this and jerk the same way at the same time? You think this, the leader said, all right, fellas, mental telepathy told them other birds, we're getting ready to make an 80 degree turn right here and just about there, boom, and there they go, and they all do it at the same time. He don't tell him, and he don't tell him, and he don't tell him, and he don't tell him. It ain't like, like that. They're flying like this, and they all go like that. Have you ever seen them do that? You tell me how they do that. I figured it out. I believe. And I was watching the other day, and the leaves were blowing at the house. And them leaves, I saw leaves blowing. I was out there blowing leaves, and I fixed them. Got my basketball court fixed finally this summer. And I was out there and I got me a little leaf blower. And I was blowing the leaves. And the fast I'd blow them on, the, the wind would blow them back on. The fast I'd blow them off, the wind would blow them back on. You can't get rid of them leaves this time of year. And uh, they, they, all, they all come up through there and I saw about a million leaves blowing. And all the leaves went woof like this. And I thought, that's the way them birds do. So the wind is moving them leaves. So I reckon maybe... The, the, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. You reckon the Holy Spirit might be telling those birds, cut left, all at the same time? You say God talks to birds? He talked to a donkey and told him that he talked to all them animals that suddenly got in a line and went in Noah's ark. He talked to them, and they obeyed him. He talked to the fish that swallowed Jonah. See, there's a lot scientists don't know. When you leave God out and you leave the Bible, God talks to animals and they obey him. He told that rooster when Peter denied him, crow. And was, ar, ar, just like that. He told that one fish, eat that dollar bill. And he ate it and then Peter caught it and paid his taxes with it. He told that donkey, uh, turn around. He said, well, why are you being so mean to me? Like that. He told, if he can do that, he can tell birds where to go for the winter time. I'm telling you tonight, it is he that hath made us. I'm glad my mother's not a monkey. Amen. Now, you've never heard of nobody say what I just said about that wind and them leaves. I, I don't know if the Lord give me that or not. 
But I wouldn't doubt it one bit that it ain't the Holy Ghost moving them birds in one way or the other. He did it in the Bible. He did it in the Bible. He told the whale to swallow Jonah and then told him to go over there and spit him out. Got that book? You're way ahead of science, brother, on that right there. I'm glad my mother was not a monkey. There's leaf bugs in South America whose legs are shaped just like the leaves, the trees that they live on. Like their legs are made just like that so that they don't all get eat up. You know what they tell you? They say they evolve like that to protect themselves. And they say that they adapt to their environment so that they won't all get eat. I reckon them cardinals, them red birds, adapted to their environment. Wonder why God stuck them red birds out there. They don't adapt to nothing out there. The Lord did that just to stump you if you don't believe his word. Amen? Listen, you can't, bugs can't make their, le- their legs shaped like leaves. If you could invent something to change the shape of your legs, you'd be a millionaire by tomorrow. Amen, ladies? That's right. I'm glad I don't have a mother that's a monkey. Number three. I said first, I'm thankful that I don't have a mummy for a savior. I said second, I'm thankful I don't have a a monkey for a mother. Number three, I'm thankful that I don't have a myth for a Bible. Say amen right there. I'm thankful that I've got a book that I can believe in, that's solid, that stood the test of time, that's never been proven wrong, that's right, that is true from the beginning, that'll stand when the world's on fire, and that's been proven through the ages of time, this old book that we got laying here tonight. There are 65 billion books in the world, been published since the uh, dawning of time. The Library of Congress up there in Washington or wherever it's at, has 530 miles of shelves of books. Americans spend $24 billion a year on books. And guess which one is the world's bestseller? This one. Nobody's ever published or wrote a book that's been copied more and sold more than that book. The King James Bible has been published to more people than any book that's ever been on planet Earth. It saw the the birth of all the other books. It'll see the grave of the rest of them. It'll stand when the world's on fire. It's a book past every other book. 39 inspired books in the Old Testament. 27 inspired books in the New Testament, making a total of 66 inspired books in the Word of God. There are no lost books of the Bible. Somebody said, well, I saw on TV the lost books of the Bible. They're crazy. God never lost no books. The Catholic Church stuck a bunch in there that ain't supposed to be in, and because they're not in theirs, they claim there's lost. No, no. God never lost no books. God never lost no books. They're all right here where they're supposed to be. They quote, they quote. It's a shame people don't know the Bible no more than they do. You got people running around here saying, oh, the Bible's full of mistakes, and they don't know 10 verses of it. They heard some professor say that, and just repeating what they serve, they've heard because they don't want to live, live by what the book said. So these two old drunks went out one night, and uh, he said, well, they're praying. He said, I can pray the Lord's Prayer. He said, you can't do it. He said, I can too. I can pray the Lord's Prayer. He said, I'll give you $5 if you can pray the Lord's Prayer. He said, all right. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's making me to lie down in green pastures. He said, hey, like that. He said, okay, I guess I'll give you $5. That's the way people are about the Bible. They don't know where it's upside down, right side up. They have no idea. They don't know what dispensations are. They have no clue on right, right division. They don't know. You hear them people on TV saying the Bible justifies slavery and the Bible supports uh, murder and rape. and uh, they're, That's ridiculous. They're, they're servant. The Bible supports servanthood. And there's servanthood in the Bible. And it, it, times were different back then. People had to, they'd work for somebody or starve.
starved to death. And it was their, their choice a lot of times. And there were th things were different back then. But the Bible don't support cruel uh, that slavery like we know slavery today and, and rape and incest and, and, and adultery. And all. The Bible don't support anything that's wrong. I'm telling you, I'm glad I don't have a myth for a Bible. I'm glad for 1 John 5, 17. I'm glad it talks about uh, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. I'm glad the Bible tells about Father, Son, Holy Ghost. They're all three, one, and they're all one and three, three and one, and the one in the middle that died for me. That's what they say. Uh, yeah, they say uh, uh, there's God the Father, there's God the Son, there's God the Holy Ghost. When you deal with God the Father, you're dealing with God. When you deal with God the Son, you're dealing with God. When you deal with the Holy Ghost, you're dealing with God. There are not three gods. There are one God, eternally existent, and three persons that are all co-equal, yet separate. Equal but separate. Equal but separate. You say, explain it. I can't. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. It's a mystery, but thank God. Hallelujah. I believe that. I'm glad we got a Bible tonight. Woo! Thank God for the Bible. Thank God for the Bible, people. Thank God for the Bible. Read it. Learn it. Love it. Live it. You want to have marriage problems? Get your nose in that book right there. Want to know how to raise kids? Get your nose in that book. The right spirit will get on you and get on the kids. Amen. I'm glad for the Bible. Quickly, number four. I said, number one, I'm thankful that I don't have a mummy for a Savior. Number two, I'm thankful I don't have a monkey for a mother. Number three, I'm thankful I don't have a myth for a Bible. Number four, I'm thankful I don't have a morgue for a church. Amen. That's an old country outline the Lord gave me. A morgue for a church. Listen, we're not perfect. We're not, I mean, we're a long way from where we should be. And I'm burdened for our church. I pray all the time. I pray God bless our church. God. But I thank God that we still have a church that every now and then you can feel a breeze from another world. Come through here and feel the Spirit of God. It's not a morgue, brother. This ain't no funeral home. I, this is a live, living church of the living God. And I'm glad, thank God, we got a church. And I, don't, I wouldn't want to go to a morgue every Sunday morning. You know why so many people are quitting church? Look at what they go to every Sunday. Lord, we get, we get those emails. We get them from up north, especially up north, Ohio, Illinois, Pennsylvania, New York, all the time. We can't find a church that believes like y'all. We can't find a church where anybody preaches like that. We can't find a church where a choir, they love our choir. You know what, just old down-home singing, singing from your heart. We got this thing nowadays that to sing Christian music, you have to be an entertainer, and you have to have a professional voice, a professional man. Oh, no, 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 that is not what the Bible teaches. Those Christians in the early days, they all got together and didn't even have no music. And they sung out in caves and in dens. And they just sung, making joy in their heart to the Lord and melody. And they sang, let me tell you something tonight. You take away the lights and the smoke and the music and the, and the theatrics out of them mega churches, they ain't got nothing. You know what, brother? We can get out there on the side of a hill somewhere and somebody start praising God. Somebody start saying amen, start preaching that book. I don't have no organ backing me up tonight. I don't have no sound effects whipping you into a frenzy. I don't have drums at a certain spot to whip everybody's emotions up. I'm dependent on one thing and one one. I'm dependent on that one, that made us to come through every now and then and start working in your heart and take that word and work in you that hear it. And that'll get more done than all that other stuff ever could. I'm glad I don't have a morgue for a church. Lord, there's one down there. Got so dead down there. They said this. So a woman died right in the church, right in service one Sunday morning. They called the EMS to come get her. They carried four women out before they got the right one. They was all sitting in there look like his. You ever been in them churches where they sit there and their faces are that long? Lord, them's awful. I hate going to a place like that. I've been to them where they look at you like, what are you doing here? Sit there, that lip stuck out that far. I act like they're miserable. That's a morgue, brother. That's a morgue. That's for dead people. I'm glad I don't have a morgue 
for a church. Now, I ain't going to try to manufacture nothing fake. I ain't going to do that because I don't believe in it. But I'll tell you one thing, brother. I ain't going to sit around in a dead church. I ain't going to sit around. If y'all want to dry up and be dead, that's up to you. But I don't like it. I don't believe in it. I won't lie. I believe the spirit, the church of God's alive. I believe Christians ought to be alive. There ought to be some bubbling up in your soul once in a while. Once in a while, you get the can't help it, and your hand goes up before you even realize it. Sometimes, listen. Sometimes, don't it start bubbling down here? You think, Lord of God, that's right. That's right, preacher. Come on, Amen. Bring it on, brother. Shake that bush. That's right. Amen. Cut the mustard. That's. I mean, boy, just somebody just haul off and preach and start bubbling down in your soul. Oh, I'm glad I don't have a more for a church. Amen. I love them stories. The Bible said old David danced before the Lord with all of his might. Now this is not with all of your might. That ain't with all your might. Old David danced, no women, no music. He just went, glory to God. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. That's the way he did. You say, how do you know? Because he did it with all of his might, and he did it before the Lord. He didn't have a female partner or a light show. He danced before the Lord with all of his might. Amen? Bible said in Acts chapter 3 and verse 8, you don't think I'm preaching Scripture? They lift, they reached down there and they ripped that man up that couldn't walk and they lift him up and the Bible said he went walking and leaping and praising God. I can't. That's what he done. He went walking and leaping and praising God. 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 Woo! Walking. Hallelujah. Hot and hot And a hot cha cha. He didn't do that. I'm glad I don't have a more. For a church. Y'all set and drop if you want to. I think you ought to holler amen. I think once in a while you ought to just shout it out and say hallelujah. That's what they do at a ball game. You say, well, they'll think we're crazy. Well, I think they are. I think anybody that goes crazy at ball game is crazy. But I'm glad I don't have a morgue for a church. I like that story, that old woman. If I wasn't sick, I'd haul off and preach. Said down there in Atlanta, they got down there a drive through confessional. That's how bad it's got. If you're in a hurry, want to go to a picnic, just drive through. Confess your sins, go on to the mountains. They call it toot and tail or go to hell. I'm glad I don't have a morgue for a church. Finally, I said, number one, I don't have a mummy for a savior. I'm thankful that I don't have a monkey for a mother. I'm thankful I don't have a myth for a Bible. I'm thankful I don't have a morgue for a church. Finally, I'm thankful that I don't have a modernist for a pastor. My pastor believed the word of God. He believed in heaven. A literal heaven where we're going to live forever with Jesus. He believed in hell where people burn forever who reject the Lord Jesus Christ. He wasn't a Calvinist. A Calvinist believes that God preordains people to trust Christ before they're ever born. And that ain't true. Every time predestination is mentioned in the Bible, it's always connected with foreknowledge. God knew what you was going to do and he predestinated you in Christ. So you're not predestinated until you get in Christ. They missed it. Calvin missed it. He might have knew some stuff, but he missed it. And I'm telling you, my pastor believed if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you go to hell forever and ever. If you receive you go to heaven forever and ever and ever. He was not a modernist. I'm thankful tonight, and I mean this with all my heart, when I got saved, I don't know why God had mercy on me. My mom got that old-time religious spirit in the spine in the mountains. And her and my aunt Shirley 
sang all over Marion and different places in revivals when I was little. And I felt that real thing. And when I got saved, I went down here to the camp meeting <coughs> in Nebo. <coughs> and uh, I went to the camp meeting. Brother Ed Maccabee got up to preach. Brother Ed come down. He said, the Bible said, wow. Boy, it was like, it was like everything he was saying was going down into my heart. I got to sit and listen to Lester Roloff in person. Jack Hiles, John R. Rice, Tom Malone. Mays Jackson and Billy Kelly. And them guys in person. I had Billy Kelly for revival. Ralph Sr. and all them guys. And I remember I sat there as a young preacher. Boy, in my heart, they were talking about it. And I thought, my, my, my. It, it was like everything they would say. Something in me would say, that's right. That's right. That's right. You know the Holy Spirit inside you will bear, bear witness to something true. Something true, something you say, yep, yep. And something false comes and something says, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Can't you tell it? Can't you tell it? Some old preacher say something on the radio that ain't right. You can sort of just feel something just sort of, you know, you can tell it gets off a little bit. It gets off a little bit. And I'm glad I got to hear them old men preach. I'm glad I got to hear Percy Ray preach from the red lights of hell. I'm glad I got to hear Brother Sammy Allen and Dr. Phil Kidd and them men stand up and preach. I'm glad I got to hear. I'm glad my pastor, Hall Hollifield, was not a modernist. He wasn't one of these that said, well, you can't take the miracles in the Bible literal. and There's no real literal hell. All that. Just quit the ministry if that's what you believe. Quit it. Do everybody a favor and quit it. I'm glad I heard about Sam Jones and George Mueller who read the Bible through 200 times. 100 on his knees. Prayed in millions of dollars to feed them orphans. I'm glad I got to read about J, J, uh, Wilbur Chapman and Billy Sunday. I'm glad I read about Billy Sunday who would break chairs on the altar and wind up preaching in his, in his T-shirt. And have his, have his rich, he run the bases. He's a professional baseball player and he held the record for running the bases. Run them barefooted. They wouldn't let you do that now. He run them barefooted, and old Billy Sunday got saved and picked up a Bible and started preaching. Up there at that Pacific Garden Mission up there in Chicago, Illinois, that unshackled program still comes on. Thank God for old, old bulwarks of faith like that place. Amen. You ought to thank God. You want to be thankful for some Thanksgiving? Thank God you got hooked up with the truth and the right spirit and the right Bible and the right kind of church. Thank God we're not in some kind of cult tonight. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. George Whitfield. They said you could hear that man preach on a clear night for a country mile, a mile with his natural voice. And he'd preach till his throat would bleed. I've preached in, in bad shape before. I have. Many times. That man preached till his throat would bleed. And they said he'd, he'd ride, he'd ride, he'd come on a horse and he'd go from one town to another town to another town and he'd preach and great big crowds of people would come in and hear him preach. And on that last journey, he'd come to this little old town and he'd preach during the day and all the farmers and cotton mill workers and everybody would come out to hear him preach. And he was real tired and sick. And I mean, just on his deathbed nearly. And he went upstairs into a little second or third floor room to lay down and sleep. And that night about 10 o'clock, after the workers got off, come in from the fields, and a big crowd gathered down in the street, said, George, preach, George, preach. We didn't get to hear you. We had to work all day. We didn't get to hear you. Will you come preach? That old man of God, they said he got up and come and raised that window. Him hardly able to walk. Stuff like that. Stuff like that. I, when I'm having it hard, I think about guys like that. And I think about guys that went when they didn't feel like going. 
and went when they couldn't see a step in front of them, kept going anyway. Heart in mercy, that helps me. Old George Whitfield went out there and he said he opened up his Bible and he lit a candle and he started preaching. And he preached to that crowd down there and he preached and preached till his throat was hurting. And that night, he said that old, he laid down and that candle was burned out. The next morning, they come up there and knocked on his door. He said, Preacher, it's time for breakfast. He couldn't couldn't get no answer. Preacher, time for breakfast. He didn't get no answer. They knew something was wrong. They pushed the door and came out. God's man, George Whitfield, was laying in that bed, stiff. You know what they said? They said he preached the light blood. Just listen, I ain't much tonight. I ain't much of a person, I ain't much of a preacher. By God's grace, I want to preach till the lights go out. That's my prayer. I don't want to be a has-been. I don't want people to look at me and say, he used to be a preacher. I don't want people, listen people, don't let your kids look at you and say, they used to go to church. Preach, bless God till the lights go out. No turning back. No turning back. Put the pedal to the metal. Don't quit. Get in, re-enlist. Get back in there. Go till the lights go out. I'm thankful I didn't have a modernist for a pastor. Let's stand there. With every head's bowed, every eye's closed. No one's talking. No one's moving. Pianists play softly. I wonder if you're here tonight. You just want to slip out of your seat, get down here in this altar, and say, Lord, I want to thank you. Lord, I want to thank you for some things that I don't have. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. God's been good to us. God's been good to us. Have you been thinking about quitting? Have you been thinking about slacking up? Let's get down here and thank you for what we don't have. Amen. Thank God. Amen. She's playing. She's playing softly in that. God's speaking to hearts. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Help us, Lord, not just to serve you when things are going good and when it's fun, but, Lord, help us to serve you when it's hard, when it's dark, when it's difficult, when the storms are raging, and when, we, when our flesh don't want to, and the family don't want to, and the friends don't want to, and the weather's bad, and the spirit is low. God, help us to serve you anyway, Lord, to make up our mind live for you and do right. Dear Jesus, help us tonight, we pray. Hallelujah. God, do what ought to be done. Bless every single person here tonight. Help every one of us to make up our mind that we're going to serve you and do right no matter what. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're still praying tonight. We're still praying tonight. Maybe you need to just rededicate your life. Get back in there and serve God like you ought to. Amen. Don't let the devil sidetrack you. Don't let the devil sidetrack you. Get your attention off on something else. Keep the main thing the main thing. Honor God. He'll, he'll bless you for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.